So we're looking at the Joropo uh, by Jose Luis Merlin. This is part of the Suite del Recuerdo. It's a beautiful piece, but you need to treat it with a lot of care. You know, you have to be very patient, particularly with yourself. As you practice, there's a lot of shifting, right? So you have this introduction where you start actually on seventh position and you start with the T, that, that is for him the trino. And there's so many ways of doing it, right? You actually have a very good uh, trino. Uh, you can just go ring, middle index, or you can just do what I do is kind of imitate the flamenco tremolo, the index before that, index, ring, middle, index. And then you do it on fourth position. So one and three on seventh position. And my thumb is on the third string, muting that string so that I don't get that an accident, right? Then you repeat that. So there's our eighth notes the next time. And then you have F sharp and, and B, right? Second position. And then E major. Do a tambora, or you can just play it. Right? Then you get a fourth position. Start on the B string, first string, pull off, and then pull off from four to one. That's all in fourth position. That part is easy, right? And then you get back to an E major chord. And he marks it in this chord, right? P and A, thumb and ring, middle, index, thumb travels to the fourth string, then back to the sixth string. And you repeat the same process, right? Back to fourth position, then back. In many ways, this is kind of like a rondo because this theme is going to come back. And then just repeat it ease. Right? For each one of the beats, right? Each, each one of the, two, the, the three beats in this case. And one, and, and two, and three, and... And then you get yourself into... A sort of, right? You have that... It's, it's a hint at E major, it's a hint at D major. Um, it's just a non committal chord, right? Which kind of works as a dominant of A major, right? So uh, you kind of are an E major, A major. Uh, and then you repeat that, that other process, but this time, of course, since you're an A major, you're using an A bass. Right away, change keys abruptly from A major to A minor. Right, so at, you just basically pinch the thumb on the ring string, the, the ring finger on the first string, and then you chop with index and middle the third and second strings. Fourth string, fifth string. Right, two E two off four. On that D sharp of the second string, and then just travel from second string to first string. So, right, and another thing that, that we have to talk about is very important, very critical to think about positive crossings on your right hand, right? That's not a very positive crossing where you have to turn your hand around to get from middle to index, right? It's a lot easier from index to middle, right? So it's better to start with index, so that you do the pull up with middle, then you're in a second string with index, and you reply to that with middle, right? A lot harder the other way around, right? And you don't want to be doing that, and it, it takes away from the quality of your sound, right? Now you're getting back to E major, right? So. spider chord, uh, B7 chord, so 2, 1, 3, and 4, right, 1 being on the first sharp on a D, sh on first, uh, first uh, fret on a D sharp, and then everything else is on the, on the second fret. Right, so together with the thumb at first, right away, because it's an eighth note, right, then again, so, and you wait longer on the quarter note, and then you have the same rhythm right next door. Except that you have F sharp, B, and D sharp, so you are right with all the fingers lined up in the fourth fret. And your bass, of course, is the A. And here is a little bit of a tricky part, right? So you have that. That I mean, you're thinking, well, why is that so tricky? It's because of the next change. So so quite a bit of change over the left hand, right? So. Then I 
have to change over here, then back, right? And then this part, the, the next part is absolutely beautiful, breathtaking. And he has a very fun fingering, right? M, A, this is right hand fingering, right? B, one, two for the A sharp, then B, right? So after the chord, middle, ring, pull off, index, middle, right? And that really sets you up for getting your ring finger to the first string in this next section. So now you're in 6-8 really, so... that G sharp, A sharp, B, then again, then you change to, I mean he says to make a mini bar, you don't necessarily need to make a full bar, then you just move your operation to first position, you were in second position for this, one, two, four, on the fifth fret, right? So it's bass, again. And then we just change a, go back to our first situation. And then instead, instead of doing this, you're actually, you're doing the same chord, you're just moving the same operation. harmony. So it really is the same chord. Two, one, three, four, two, three, and four on the same fret, one, one fret behind. So together with thumb, fingers all along, inside strings, right? Fingers with thumb again. So start with thumb, end with thumb. Then move it to third position. One position over. Right? And then you stay there with your pinky. nice to do a glissando. Totally up to you. Right? On the right hand that's a little bit more difficult, right? stretches to get the A sharp, then back to one on the on the B, right? And I suggest not doing what I just did, which is playing that with the ring finger. You really want to reserve your ring finger for the downbeat of the next measure because of the arpeggio, descending arpeggio, right? So better to start with an index finger, and that way you avoid the unnecessary negative crossing, right? Then ring finger, middle, index, thumb, just to hammer with four, right? Um, yeah, you could do that. Uh, you could just say ring, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, a middle thumb, right? And, and then you actually have the same entrance. I remember when I told you we're going to go back to the very beginning. section, which is a row on the right, so you have A, B, now you have A again, now it's going to be C, a completely different section, right? This is very beautiful, a little bit of a stretch situation, right? So you have the A sharp on the fifth string, first fret, then you have a C sharp on the sixth string, second string, second fret, and then you have your F sharp over here, right? So it's asking a little bit of work from your left hand. And I would do thumb and ring, 
then index for the inside voices, keep those quiet, right? Because they're just accompaniment. Then thumb is gonna do the F sharp. Right, so the right hand is kind of easy, the left hand is where you have to hold a little bit of an uncomfortable chord. But luckily the next chord is not that bad. Right, and then, you know, just to keep things uh, spicy, he just uh, moves you over. Right, so you get back to the first chord. Position that you had earlier for the first chord, but in third position. So third, that's in fourth position, and that's in sixth position. Uh, not position, but fret, right? Uh, fourth fret, for, uh, and, and then sixth fret. And then you just move one and two over one fret. And then you replace four with three. You could have kept four. I mean, you really could. Um, I, I prefer to move on to three. One fret uh, with three, that's your guide finger. That's on the seventh fret. The C sharp is on the third string on the sixth fret, right? So you're just walking that third string. Uh, but you kind of move, uh, do you move both? That's right. So you just wait to move. Do, do you move the, the, the third string first? Change to fourth position. Then, then right away you go, go to third position. Second position. Then because of uh, positive crossing, right? And then use the ring finger. And then you repeat the ring finger, but since there is a pull off right there, you're going to be okay. Or... And then you're back to the original theme. So you get this pampeano, this 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 uh, really fun rhythm. So first you get the chord, and then you do the chasquido, right? Right. One, two, and three. Right. One, two, and three. One, and two, and three. And you just change it. So it's only the first measure that has a different. chords right four one three and then of course two for the beat right so again so that, that's kind of like a spider chord it's a, a b dominant chord two one three four two three or four on the same fret one is for the d sharp so Right? But he wants them to go kind of quick. At first, just practice them with planting and go very slow. you're strumming, right? And he says fortissimo. So all you're doing is just lifting your pinky from the C sharp. And then you second 
chord. So the only thing that changes is C sharp or B, right? First chord, B7, second chord, E major, but with C sharp added, right? information we have and then you go back and this is a little bit different so you're using a bar here F sharp E A sharp D right then you are on a seventh position and uh, oh yeah so you have A D sharp F double sharp which is G natural right and then B right so one two Make sure that you get that third beat and you kind of like jab it, right? One, two, three. Right? A little tricky. You have a pull off from 12 to 9, right? Then the next two strings are in the same fret in the bar. Get that C sharp right there on the 11th fret. And then, then open first string, E major chord. A little bit of a low bush there, right? Below bush one. Then back to this chord, E major, E major. Happy practicing.